All right, we're taking a short break this week from working on the Beachside Bungalow because I don't have all of the stuff needed to start the wiring process. So we're going to make some moving boxes. I kind of got obsessed with making moving boxes the other day because I thought it'd be fun to stage the house with moving boxes in it when I first get it done. So we're going to make, I'm going to show you how to make some movie, moving boxes and how to set up the paper so it makes it really easy to cut them out. So stay tuned and see how easy this is to do. All right, so I'm going to show you four sizes today. I've made a few other odd sized boxes here and there just out of scraps, but today we're going to concentrate on these three, these four sizes. We have an extra large, a large, a medium, a medium, and a small. Now these sizes are based on the sizes of the real boxes that U-Haul, the U-Haul company sells for moving. That's what I used. I used a U-Haul truck and I just picked up a bunch of boxes when I moved a year ago from there store so that's what I'm going with because I'm still living with those boxes. Now you can decorate the sides of these boxes however you want but I'm going to show you how to cut them and I'll talk to you a little bit about my process that I use to come up with how to do this. So I checked the sizes and I wrote those all down. Then I made myself some patterns. These are all the patterns that I'm going to share with you today for these four sizes. But since I'm showing you how to cut multiples out of a page, I decided to kind of do some color-coded drawings of each size. And I'll have a photograph of these on the website, on the blog post that goes with this video. Any of my videos that you look at, if you go to the description box below it on YouTube, there will be a link to my blog post that goes with that specific um, YouTube video. And there'll be more information there, pictures and all kinds of stuff. So this is for the extra large one, which is what I'm going to show you. We're going to draw these lines, and I'll talk to you about what these different colors mean as we go. So let's start out by drawing the first these horizontal lines. The horizontal lines I drew in two different colors. The black lines are going to be scored later. The red lines are where we're going to cut when we get to that point. So what are we making our boxes from? Well, I wanted them to look like cardboard boxes. So I went to the craft store and I bought a package of craft color cardstock. I bought 8.5 by 11 because it's just easier to work with for me. And I can use it for other things. Um, and now we're going, and it looks like cardboard. So now we're going to draw our lines. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies are acting up so badly right now. So if I'm coughing and wheezing, that's why it's allergies. It's totally fine. I'm just really congested. All right, so I'm going to go down 3 fourths of an inch from the top of the paper, and I'm going to draw a line with my pencil. Now, when you are doing your boxes, I recommend you don't draw your lines too horribly dark, but they are going to go on the inside. It'll look neater, though, if you don't have dark pencil lines. I'm drawing a little darker than I normally would so that you guys can see them. Now I'm going to go down two inches, and I'm using a quilting ruler. I love this for doing different, using anytime I need to measure really precisely. I draw a line at two inches. Now I'm going to go down three-fourths of an inch again. Three-fourths of an inch, and then I'll show you what we've got. So what I have drawn now, these three lines are the horizontal lines for our first box. Those are these three lines. This red line, remember, is a cut line. That's the one between the boxes. So that's this one. We have a flap, we have a box, and we have its other flap. So now we need to go down. We need to make the flap for the next box. That's three-fourths of an inch down, lining up the three-fourths of an inch marks with the line I just drew. Now I'm going to go down two inches. It's another box body. Now we need three-fourths of an inch for the flap for this one. I'm showing you this and explaining it to you this way. I know it takes longer, and I know some people get irritated with that, but I want you to understand what I'm doing so that if there are other sizes of boxes you want to create, you'll be able to. 
So there's our cut line for our second box. Now we need the flap for the third one. We can get three boxes on this paper of this size. <clears throat> flap line. Box side. And now we're going to measure three-fourths of an inch again because it's going to take not quite the whole piece of paper. All right. Now we need to draw our lines up and down to create the side folds on our box. So we are going to go over two inches first. The first line is two inches from the edge. And again, the diagram will be in, don't worry about taking notes or anything, the, the amounts that you measure will be on that diagram on the blog post. So I'm going to draw a line all the way from top to bottom. And now I'm going to go one and a half inches. Because this box is not a square box. It is narrower in one direction. Now we need another two inch side. And now another one and a half inch side. Powering off. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't realize I'd left that on. All right, now we're going to draw a little quarter inch line. That's going to give us our tabs later. So now, I'm going to, I find it easier to score this at this point than after I cut it out. You can either score it after it's cut out or before it doesn't matter. Let's start by scoring these vertical lines. And since one of the things, and I just got this on top of a piece of just card, lightweight cardboard because I need something softer than my tile under it. I'm using the back of a table knife blade because one of the things I still can't find after I moved is my scoring board. And since I know a lot of you guys don't have one, I'm just going to do it this way. I'm using a table knife or a butter knife because that won't break through the paper. It will just make it'll make a crease, kind of. Give me a place to, to fold from. Now I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to do all of the main vertical lines. And we don't have to score that very last one that's a quarter inch away from the edge because that is only a cut line. It's not going to be folded. We're scoring the places where we're going to fold the paper later. Now I'm going to score, I'm going to score on this line. It won't hurt to score it, but you don't need to. And then I'm going to score this line at the bottom of the box. I'm going to skip that line because that's just a cut line. I don't need to score that one. I'm not going to fold on that one. We're actually going to cut some of the areas we've scored. It won't hurt it. And it's just easier to score the whole piece at once. score that one. That's going to be a coat line. All right, now I'm going to turn the camera off for just a second because I want to get a picture of this for you guys for the blog. All right, hopefully that picture will, will turn out for me. Now I'm going to cut on the first cut line. And you could cut these out with scissors. You can cut them out with a uh, a um, paper cutter, you could cut it out with your craft knife and a straight edge. It doesn't matter. Now what I like to do is start by 
folding away from where I just scored. And I go ahead and do my folding and then go back and do my cutting. And you can see it wants to fold where we scored it. Oops, did I have any of that under camera? I hope I did. All right. Now that we've pre-folded, I'm going to go through and I'm going to cut. These are the lines that I have done in blue. I'm going to cut on these. We're going to cut from the edge just to that three quarters of an inch down for our flap. We're just releasing the flap from the one next to it. And now this tab, you don't have to be exact on how you cut the tab. You just want to cut, you want a tab shape so it'll be easier to glue it. And I'm going to have to hurry with this step because my battery is starting to flash on my video camera. So we're going to start by folding all of these so we know that they're going to fold the way we want them easier to do this now. Also, if you want to decorate your boxes, this would be the time to do it. Maybe you want to do something like write bedroom on the box or kitchen or whatever. Or maybe you want to put a logo. You could do that now. The next thing we need to do is glue this closed and I don't have a toothpick, so I'll grab a skinny stick. I'm going to grab a little bit of glue and I'm going to put glue just on this little tab. Try and get it right up to the fold line. There we go. And now, if we've done our work, if we've folded everything right, it should meet up just perfectly. Make sure that you are matching up your flaps so that they are level. And I find it very helpful to fold my flaps down. Not only does this help me to line this up, but it also helps me to get a clamp on. Come on. Every other time I've done this, it has worked really easily. With the camera on, of course, it's going to fight with me. All right, I'm going to get another clamp on this side, making sure that that is staying nice and straight. And now I'm going to let this glue dry, and I'm going to go plug my camera in. All right, this glue is dry now, and the next thing we need to do is glue our bottom flaps in. Now, if you really want these to look realistic, oops, let's do it on the bottom, not on the top. Uh, if you want these to look really realistic, you could, after you glue these shut, um, take some little narrow pieces of tape and add to the sides of the box. And I'm just going to put a little glue in the four spots that this is going to contact. I am determined to get every bit of glue out of that bottle of glue. Now if you spread your glue out like this on the whole thing, be careful of what surface you're setting your box on because if glue keeps, seeps out of there, it could glue it to your table. I'm not worried about it on this tile. Now set your box down and I have found, first off, make sure your box is nice and square and set something with a little bit of weight to it inside. The, I, this is just a tall skinny glass shot glass. Uh, beads would work, something like that. You just need to put a little bit of weight on there and when that glue dries I'll come back and we will look at how these boxes can be used. Alright, the glue on our bottom flaps is dry enough we can handle this now. So I hope you found this box to be fun. Now, ways to use this. You could 
just tape the flap shut and put it in your dollhouse that way. You could have it open and have stuff sticking out of it. You could kind of weave those flaps together like we do in real life and put it in the attic or put it in the corner of the room or any number of places. You could stack them in your dollhouse garage. You can put these boxes anywhere in your dollhouse and it would add to the story of the dollhouse. Also, you could leave some of them not glued together and just stack them that way. That's how the boxes were when I brought them home before I moved. And it makes an easy way to store boxes in real life and in miniature life. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it fun and entertaining and it is a project that you can use. Be sure to check the blog post because like I said, I'll have photos of those diagrams I drew out with a little more, hopefully some instructions on there, written instructions so that you'll know how to use them. Um, if, you have, if you're a subscriber, great. I love to have you here. If you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed the video, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll know when I put out another video. If you have friends that do dollhouse miniatures, pass the links to this channel and my blog onto them and I will talk to you next time. Bye.